welcome back to the Board Drill Podcast. As always, I'm Kyle Bradburn, your host, and with me is my co-host, Matt Dixon, who hates the way I introduce him, but I'm going to continue to do that as well. Tonight, we're here with a special guest. We have Ty Gower, who's the DC at Plano West. Um, I'm going to turn it over to him here in a second so he can kind of talk a little bit about his background, and then we're going to get into it. But first of all, we like to uh, say hi to every coach in our own special way. So, Matt, we got coach on. Let's say hello. Yay. Yeah. Hey. Appreciate you coming <laughs> on, <Vince. clears throat> All right, coach, go ahead and take it away. Tell us a little bit about yourself, and then he's got a visual tonight that we're going to go through. <clears throat> Guys, man, honored to 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 be with you guys. Um, uh, you know, I, I kind of followed you on on Twitter and saw it. You know, you guys post some videos, and and you know how it is. It's it's how it's how coaches have survived and network and clinicking and and twittering and and all all of the above. <laughs> so, so what you guys are doing, man, is 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 awesome. You know, we talk about revolutionizing the game and changing the game and modern the game, and and, and so. Um, you know, YouTube and podcasts and social media, man, you, you guys are crushing it and, and, and blessed and honored to be a part of <laughs> what you got going. So thank you. Thank you, guys. We appreciate it, Coach. And just to let you know, I don't know if you're that guy yet, but we all are, are also on TikTok. All right. We're, we're really cutting edge here. So that, that's a wife <laughs> deal. Okay. I'm only on Twitter. I mean, really, like, like I deleted the Facebook like 10 <laughs> years ago. I mean, I probably is, a good idea. There's no Instagram. There's no, yeah. So, so, um, now that I know that, I'm gonna have my wife's gonna have to add y'all, whatever it is now on TikTok. So, it's just, so that's, yeah, it's it's board drill podcast. We're we're perfect. on there and we uh, we cut everything up into ten minute clips and throw it on there. So perfect. Well, she just you've got a new follower now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but no, guys, I, I appreciate you having me. Um, like I said, I, I'm, I'm Ty Gower. Um, I'm originally born and raised coach's kid from Oklahoma. Um, you know, I've been fortunate <laughs> to be around good players, good coaches, good programs. Um, seen, seen lots of ball from, from birth, you know, at the, at the small school <laughs> level, at the big school level, um, in Oklahoma and, and, and Texas, um, uh, coach two years as a GA at Henderson state university. Um, and so I've been blessed to be around good people, good programs, good coaches, going to clinics and networking with, with dad when I was, you know, 10, 12, 14 years old, you know? <laughs> so, um, uh, it, it, it's always good to give back to a game. that has been really good to me, you know? And Absolutely. so when I, when I say give back, you know, I hope, you know, we, we all have a cliche of if you take one thing away from a clinic, it was a successful clinic. Right. hundred um, percent. You know, you want to go to each meeting and take away one, but you know that there's going to be some guy that doesn't fit you. Right. But, but I hope that, that I can give you something, whether you coach offense, defense, special teams, whatever you coach, but I hope there's something in here you can grasp. You can take away, you know, from this and take it with you and say, man, uh, I heard coach Gower talk about this and, and probably most of it, I'm going to tell you something that I've stolen. I've heard, I begged, <laughs> I borrowed, I haven't given back. You know what I mean? So, um, uh, you know, I, I think how this the cyclic of football, um, and and coaches saying, you know, you see something on Twitter, it's like, man, it's really cool, and somebody will post, yeah, we were doing that back in two thousand one, and so, um, but but anyway, again, appreciate you guys. Kind of my background, real fast, real quick, is I started as like I said, born and raised coach kid from Oklahoma. Um, really kind of started my coaching career as a G8 at Henderson State University. Uh, was it was it Broken Arrow um, in 2012 and 13 for, for a few years? And, and uh, let's call it met my wife, I guess, who was in the Norman, Oklahoma City area and moved down there and and, and kind of had a few other places I went. And I was a D.C. at uh, Norman North High School, had a really good run, was was a uh, state runner up in, in 6A in Oklahoma in 2016. And um, then have the opportunity to come down to Texas. And, and currently that's, uh, that's where I am. That's what I'm doing. And um, maybe we'll get into this of, of what I'm doing now and kind of how I got into Texas. But um, again, yeah, appreciate you guys. And, and we'll, we'll get some ball talk going. Yeah. Coach real quick before you start that broken arrow. The, the one thing I always think about broken arrows, every time I see that school on TV, it has the largest 50 yard line center field logo I've ever seen in my entire life. It is a giant, right? It's a giant B with the arrow going, it's a massive, right? So that turf actually came <laughs> after I had left. Okay. Right? Um, but, but played on, you know, I say played coached <laughs> against broken arrow um, later when that new turf was laid, but yeah, it was, you know, it was there for two years. Um, again, good people, good kids, good program, good, good overall school. Um, 
you know, our head coach was Steve Spavital, who who's like a second dad to me. Our DC that I learned so much from, he was, he was the best man at our wedding, Adam Gaylor, who's currently the DC at Jinx, Oklahoma. Um, our OC was was Jay Wilkinson, who's currently at Fayetteville. You know, he's been the head coach at Edmund Deer Creek, head coach at Coweta. Um, OC with the state championship ring in, in Broken Arrow, OC with the state championship ring in Arkansas at Fayetteville High. Um, and so and there are other guys, numerous guys on that staff that are that are head coaches, admin, um, and, and coordinators. And so, so a lot of fun we had in my short time span. I was, I was at, uh, I was at BA. So Absolutely. There's, there's tons of stories we can go on with that, mm. but, but we'll just, we'll, we'll Great, stop. Greatest there. logo in high school football. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So do you want to go ahead and get into your presentation here, coach? And, and we'll yeah, start rolling sure. through it. <laughs> sure. Um, so, so here's what I'm going to do. And, 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 if you guys kind of talk about how, how we're going to video. So you guys are listening podcast wise, you know, you're driving the truck kind of, kind of go over that if you would. Yeah. If you are um, listening on Spotify or Apple, uh, he's got some videos he's going to bring up. We're going to do our best to describe it, but if you're interested and you need a little more explanation, always come onto YouTube and you can watch the full episode there as well. All right. Very good. Again, thank you guys, man. We're going to, um, we're, we're first going to talk about combating mist. Okay. And, and you know, I, I've kind of begged, borrowed, and stolen some of these things. And there are lots of myths I think about when it comes to football, okay, when it comes to especially defensive football, right? And and these are seven myths that 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 oh, how do I how do I how do I say that that are at least my opinion, okay, and that probably doesn't mean anything, but you know, you always hear about, hey, we want our kids to play fast and a simple plan's best. Well, my belief, my argument is. They can play fast. It's all about how you coach it. We want to coach multiplicity, right? I want to give you various looks, various fronts, various coverage-wise, um, various odd fronts, various four-down fronts. Um, and, and it's all about how you coach it, how you teach it. A good coach is a good teacher. A good teacher is a good coach, right? We want to be multiple. I can't I can't sit here and um, and say, hey, against a jinx, a broken arrow, and a wassail, a bixby, I'm sitting in one front and have a few stunts and one coverage, right? Especially down in DFW. I, I can't play Allen and McKinney and Coppell and Louisville and just sit there and say, you know what, we're just going to do what we do. And there was a quote that, that Bill Belichick said one, you know, a long time ago. It says, less versatile you are, the better you have to be at what you do well. Yeah. Right? When you have a set of plans, you got to have, you know, there's not very many adjustments. Okay. So, so that's, that's debunking myth. Number one, number two is our, you know, kid, coach say our kids can't do that. And I, and I, I don't believe that. I, I, I don't believe that. It's your job to coach, and so the belief is that it's your job to coach, and kids will learn what you coach them. Believe in your players, believe in your abilities as a staff, as a coach. Study the game. Um, you know, I heard Coach Bavitol a long time ago when I was broken arrow. He, he talked about study, learn, teach, and apply. And you were going to study the game, you were going to learn the game, you were going to teach the game, and you were going to apply the game um, in all four levels of, of that study, learn, teach, and apply. And that's always really stuck with me. Third myth is, you know, oh, we, we just want to be about fundamentals, right? And I get it. This game will forever, forever be about blocking and tackling, right? Yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I mean, it will. It, it will. It will always honor size, speed, strength. It will. But, again, I've got to put my kids in a defense position to stop what you're doing or combat what you're doing. And, again, I've given up 50 numerous times, right? I mean, let's <laughs> let's not act like like I'm some, some <clears throat> gift to football, but, but – the belief is fundamentals are important, absolutely, but scheme is vital, guys. Scheme is absolutely vital. And and I want to, again, we talked about this, give the offense, multiple fronts, multiple stunts, blitz, coverages. And I want to give our kids a chance with scheme. I'm not going to play the same 4-4 four, four, cover three. Right? I'm not always going to play the same, you know, tight front and play quarters with it. Right? We're going to have to do things that give people some problems both before they play us and when they do play us, right? Myth number four, if we add this, we got to coach something else. no. Understand carryover. Teach blank is like blank or same as teaching. This is just like that, but we just called it something different. Yeah. One drill period equals multiple ideas of scheme. And then for the last three, you know, I, I, I stole this from from, from uh, Georgia here is myth. Third down is no different than first down. No, that's not true. That's a myth. <laughs> Belief is we want to be great on third down. I want to make our opponents work on third down. I want to create multiple packages, multiple blitzes, and it's a completely different entity. Right. I'm going to work third down Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and even a Friday morning walkthrough right, with different packages, different people on the field to combat what you're doing on third and short, third and medium, and third and long, third and extra long. 
and, and, and get exotic and have fun and, and, and uh, drop some stuff that, that kids go, man, that's pretty cool. And you get that fourth or fifth um, young player, you get the nose off the field, that, that three technique off the field, and you give a young kid, a young corner, a young safety, a young backer an opportunity to have a job in a third down role. Okay, myth. We're going to keep it simple. And I, I don't believe in that. I believe in multiple simplicity. And, and kill is greater than kiss. Meaning, if you're if you're thinking about this, K I L L is greater than K I S S. I mean, K I L L. We want to keep it likable and learnable. We want to teach and what we're doing in our scheme of what is likable and what we can teach and what is learnable to a to a high school kid, right? I believe that kiss. You know, the whole keep it simple, stupid. I think that's a coaching cop out. Right? I think, yeah. I, you know, it goes back to number two. Our kids can't do that. I think when you say, hey, keep it simple, you're playing into what the offense wants you to do. And then the last one, you know, you always hear coaches, you know, and, and we're the world's worst. We always we talk about, um, you know, we, we, we talk about how well they can do that because they've got really good players. Yeah, you're right. But we're going to install it. We're going to believe we can teach and coach it. Why? Because we're going to gather some playbook. We're going to gather some all twenty-two film. We're going to we're going to go meet with the best. You know, and where I'm from, right? I mean, you know, hypothetical example: OU is about two and a half hours up the road. SMU, TCU, there in DFW, right? Yep. I can drive down to Austin. I can drive down to Waco, and I can go sit with those people. I can go sit with the with with the six A state champions and the five A state champions, and 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 that's what's also so great about about this coaching profession is how many doors have been opened, not just for me, but I've been able to sit in other clinics and, and, and dark rooms and, and um, learn. And so I'm going to believe in myself and my, and, and, and our coaching staff that we can install and we can, we not may, we may not have the players obviously that, that Texas university and OU and LSU and those people have, but I'm going to see something that Dave Rand is doing. Right. Oh, yeah. I'm going to try to steal it. Right. I'm going to go, man, that's, that's, that's really good. Right. I'm going to find something that Adam Gatter's doing. And that, I'm going to say, I'm going to see that. That's really good. Right. And so whatever level it is, especially with the, the, you know, the ability to grab all 22 stuff, right. The ability to, to grab other films. It's easy to sit there and study and sit in a dark room and take notes. So I'm going to, I'm going to go meet, I'm going to go install. I'm going to go learn. Hey, how are you doing this? And sometimes you watch it and maybe you might not be able to meet or connect. So maybe you have to say, I think this is happening. And then you go coach it on your own, right? And you throw a dart and a dartboard and hope it sticks. <laughs> so debunking the seven minutes, I think, you know, and, and I've talked about this. I've said this for, for a long time. This is the thing I talked about at Glacier Clinics. But um, those are things that I, I, I don't believe, that I think are myth and that you reverse it and make it to a belief. Yeah, Coach, so, I, I'm with you when it comes to, you know, the, the simple thing. We always said, like, look, we're going to be as complex as we want to be. I was kind of a saving guy, so we ran a lot of that defense at the high school level. And I remember one time it came to we were talking about, you know, the hot two stuff. And mm -hmm. uh, and somebody was like, well, what do you feel about hot two? I said, well, we don't run that. And they say, why? Your players can't run it? I said, hell no, I don't teach it well enough. I said, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> I struggle to teach as well. My hot two guys are never as good as I want them to be. And a couple times we ran it, we got burned on it. And people were always like, well, is it the kids? I said, no, it's me. I'm not teaching it good enough. And I said, so during the off season, I'm going to go figure that out. We'll get better at it. But for now, we're going to scrap it. So right. that was one thing that I'm with you. It was like, no, the, it's not the kid's fault. It's the teacher's fault. I, I'm not teaching this concept good enough. So I, I believe wholeheartedly in what you're saying. Right. And so in, in the next <laughs> deal is I, I stole I saw this from the clinic and I stole this from, from Georgia. And I know people are like, <laughs> well, Georgia's really good. They got good players. You're right. They are. <laughs> but they play really good people, too. Ever, I mean, SEC, <laughs> Ole Miss. Defending Lane Kiffin offense, that sounds terrible. Yeah. Right? Alabama, they got pretty good players. You know what I'm saying? LSU's got pretty good players. And then when you go when you go play in bowl games and, and, and championships, I mean, you're going to play the Michigans, right? I mean, think about this year, the Michigans, the Washingtons, the Texas, right? So not only do you have to have good players from recruit, I get it, but at the same time, I'm going to try to steal from Kirby Smart, from Glenn Schumann, right? Oh, and, yeah. And so like, this is not something I came up with, so I want to give credit where credit's due. Stole this from Georgia, a PowerPoint I saw, and and we've kept it, right? Well, we want to play a lot of players. And in today's day and age, you know, we talk about, okay, well, we can only play with 11 at a time. I get it. But I want to find that top 15 or top 18. You know, I talk yeah. to you about, hey, we might want to be 3-3-5 personnel, 4-2-5 personnel, 2-4-5 personnel. You know, Oklahoma guys know that, that we had a stand-up package where – 
it looked like Helter Skelter. It was crazy. And at one time, it was a zero three eight package on third and nine. We had eight DBs. Love it. And so, and we were all standing up, and we played trap, and we played three, and we played man, and we we sometimes dropped nine out of it. Um, wow. And so, so you know, you look at it again. So my stole. But we got a lot of mileage out of it, and we've got fresh bodies on the field, which led to number two. We were multiple, you know. We're and again, you're multiple because yes, you got players that are intelligent, smart, and they're invested. But it goes back to hey, I'm I'm want to try to do as as much as I can. And there's a fine line. There's the yeah. fine line. Of, Whoa, that's overkill, right? But I always want to tote that line. I I always want to kind of step over just a little bit to say, <laughs> okay, then I need to back up versus. Never reaching it, yeah. Keep pressing, keep pressing, right? And which then leads to number three, we, we're we going to put pressure on our coaches, okay, to learn, to study, to teach, right, to apply it. And, and we're going to screw up as coaches. I've made, how many bad calls have I made in my coordinating career? Oh, I can't even count that. Many, right? <laughs> but, you know, it, it turns into I want to put pressure on myself and our staff to, to learn the game, to learn how the best are doing it, which leads to number four, study, learn, teach, and apply. And, and then five, you know, we're going to adapt and change our defense. We're going to do stuff that we look at and go, well, this is how we taught it last year. But I went and clinicked with this coach and that staff, and they're teaching it this way, and I think it's better. Now, well, when do we know it's better? Well, the good news is we have all winter, off season, we have spring ball, and we have summer. Right? We've got time, four or five, six months, to refine, to, to change, to evolve, to adapt to how we heard it at a clinic or we heard it from a coach who's doing it kind of the same way but it teaches the footwork different or the keys different or the eye work different right and the six we want to match situational football right and you know p and tens and and, and uh creating a great huddle data plan i think that's really really important and i guess i get it you know you look at it and go okay coach well they're 50 50 on first down and then they play you and it's like 80 20 run to pass yeah. right so so, you know, I'm going to go off the data I have from the first three, four, five, six ball games, obviously. And I mean, we're going to create a master situational plan. Um, so, again, stole that, but but think that's really, really good. Um, you know, like coaches, we're supposed to steal stuff. Yeah, and I think that situational football coach, that's uh, not enough high school coaches really focus in and zone in on that. So, that's a huge part of the game. And, you know, huddle. I remember when Huddle came out. Uh, I was sitting in Arkansas. You know, I was sitting in Arkadelphia, Arkansas, and working on a DSV computer in 2011. <laughs> a Huddle came out, changed my life. <laughs> um, so we'll just, we'll, with a smile on my face, I'll put it that way, right? So Huddle it has <laughs> has really really helped, obviously the high school guys, right? Yeah. So learning, progressing. We're now we're kind of flipping to if you're listening to a podcast, if you're in the truck, and you're listening. Now we're going to talk about learning progression again, something I stole, right? How do we apply our teaching and our knowledge to the field? And here we go. I know you've seen this. I know you. So, again, if you're driving the truck, the seven steps that, that again, you know, I, I tweeted out oh, about a week or two ago about somebody, oh, Nick Saban is sitting in a staff office and in a staff meeting, you know, he's got 40 coaches or, you know, GAs or whatever around him. And he's talking about how a player should be taught. Okay, somebody tweeted that, and then I quote tweeted it in, a, in the picture of an, of an Alabama playbook. I don't know exactly what year, but it was the seven steps. I mean, it might have been like the 08 playbook, but it talks about the seven steps of how a coach it needs to teach his players, right? And so you have your install meeting, and the seven steps is number one on paper, right? Playbook. Create a playbook. Now, on number two, you have a video clip after seeing it on paper. Right? And you have too many options now with Visio, with PowerPoint, okay? Too many platforms that will allow you to have on paper playbook. Yeah, it, it's a lot it's front loaded to, to create stuff, but how do kids learn? Figure out a way that kid is he a visual learner? Is he a sight learner? Is he, is he a, is he an auditory learner? Right? Does he need to draw? Does he need to step through it? So the first two things are draw it for him on paper, then show him a video clip of somebody doing it. Right. And so that's what I try to show our kids of if, if I try to show them some some previous schools I've been at or again, some all 22 film of going. They did it. Yeah, this is exactly how I want you to do it. Then, all right, meetings over, ready, break. Now we go to the practice field. OK, before we start practice, we're going to start a walkthrough. And yes, it is a walk through. It is pre practice. Right. Take your helmets off and listen and learn. All right. It's like a teacher bell work. 
And then on four, now, okay, we're going through stretch or flex or whatever it is. Now we're going to break up with some blows. Now number four, we're going to teach and coach in the indie period. So we're going to break up by backers, D-line, whatever it is. And we're going to teach it in the indie period, right? Because why? Then the fifth step is now we're going to treat it, the indie, we're going to treat it to go to fifth step of half line, pods, you know, half field stuff, right? Seven on seven, inside run. Then number six, we're going to reform it and refine it into 11 on 11, good on good period, scout team, okay? Then seven, post-practice, you're going to watch film, and now again with Huddle, right, you can type notes on it and send it to your kids, and they can watch video and practice using Huddle. So there are the seven steps. Again, I'm not, I'm not coming up with my own. Everybody's stolen this. You've seen this, this, this slide, this PowerPoint, thousands of times. But it can be applied to any level of football. And I think we're missing the boat as coaches, especially high school coaches, when we just roll out there with, you know, all right, here's what we call our four man rush. Well, what's that mean? Yeah. I need, some, I, need, I need to see it. What's it called? How do we teach it? Do I peel with the back? Do I not peel with the back? Right? Or is it is it a is it a you know a boundary reduction slant? Is it a field reduction slant? Are we playing match three? Are we playing, you know, just spin roll three? Are we playing some type of quarters where we're going to bring the field backer and push the inside back, right? And so, so I think it's really, really important that we all get on the same page as the staff and teach our kids before we go out to the field. Say, all right, here's what we're doing today. Yeah, coach. Um, I've worked with uh, some pretty good hurry up offensive guys, and they even go as far as obviously they want the kids to know the entire script. They want to make sure they know where they're going for every single indie drill. So I've seen coaches even do that at film, like, hey, and they'll pull up a, a picture of the field and say, we're going to run this drill here and this here. And so the kids know where they're going for that day. And that's such an important thing to, to show it to them multiple different ways and then make them feel comfortable with it. Because just like you said, practice becomes way more efficient that way. Right. And, and I'm, firm, I'm a firm believer in it. Um, and so now I'm going to kind of talk some X and O, some, some old stuff that, you know, if you if you've heard me or heard me at a clinic or Glazier or whatever it is or tweet out stuff, you know, in 2015, and I was in Oklahoma, we went to the mint front, right? Mint tight, whatever you want to call it, four eyes, zero four, right? And again, you, if you've heard this, you've heard this nine thousand different times, nine thousand different ways, right? And so, one of the reasons we did it was I saw this again, another thing I stole, right, from a Darwin quote. We had to adapt. We had to change our four down, four two nickel rules, right? You know, playing over <laughs> under front, over power tampa, over one wide, um, you know, lever spill, lever run fit, stuff like that. We had to change because personnel won. So we had a bunch of nickel dime DB guys versus four down line. Yeah. Right. And so, so as I look at what was walking our hallways, went, you're a dime, you're an outside backer, you're a nickel. Right. Instead of saying, oh, yeah, you're a three, you're a shade, you're a five. So we had to adapt once our personnel too, because at the time in the mid 2010s, most everybody down here in Oklahoma and Texas. OK, when I say most everybody at the five, eight, six, eight level. OK, was what? One back inside zone, one back power. Yeah. Throw it all over the yard. Right. And I talked about how the game cyclic. Now we're kind of starting to see what more three man surface. And even those guys who. Oh, they get 11 personnel, but they get in 49 different formations throughout the night. Yeah, 100%. Okay. So, so this was a quote that I stole again that I thought was really, really good and transforms into why the mint. Okay, why the, th the four I, zero four I, right? Because for us, the game has changed. Now, be careful. Some of you guys saying, whoa, whoa, whoa you just talked about how, you know, you got to run the football and tackle the football and you got to block. That, that hasn't changed. But how people are doing it has changed, right? Everybody used to run what? Toss sweep. That was the perimeter run game. Yes. Now it's oh, yeah. run, bubble and throw the flash out there. Number one, throw the quick screen, right? <laughs> that is their perimeter run game. now. And so for me, for, for us, I want to, I want to have an outside linebacker speed and his conditioning versus a bunch of three technique and true five, you know, five technique speed and conditioning. Yeah. And what this also is allows us to play one gap or two gap principles, right? Which I know you can play out four down front. I get it. I get it. But it, it also changed how people would attack us, right? Because what does every offensive Twitter guru draw up? He always draws up what? Five. Draws up a five-man box every time, yeah. Coach. Well, it, Maybe a four-man box. <laughs> he, yeah, he draws up a five, a three, a shade, and a five. Why? Because the angles are easy. It's Correct. easy to back block a shade, right? 
it's <clears> easy <throat> to, to to back block a three technique and pull the guard. You know what I'm saying? We, we crack this joke all the time, and, and Matt's an offensive guy, but every time I'll send him a clip, and it's somebody in like 11 personnel, and there's a five-man box, and I'm like, I bet this run play is going to work. Well, <laughs> you know, and, and, and so, uh, you know, I'm not here to, to say good or bad, but but <laughs> it's it, all the offensive guys, they want to know, hey, you're in shades. Yeah. You have the A gap and the B gap bubble. And again, I, came, I come from a 4-2 Stoops, Polini, Venables, school of knowledge. Yeah. Right. And so that's where I cut my teeth. That's where I learned. And and so it goes back to that Darwin quote. We had to adapt, one, for our personnel, two, because of what we were seeing from an opponent perspective. Right. Yeah. Which then led to talking about adapting and evolving. We had to figure out how to align to certain formations when we moved to this mint stuff. We moved to playing four eyes. Right. And how to handle a three man surface, how to handle a guard tackle tight end surface. Cause you know, forever, what did we play? We played over front. We yeah. played a three, you know, six or six iron, whatever you want to call it, to the tight end. And they were like, okay, wait a minute. How do we play the C gap? But we're not going to move the front. Like we're going to keep the four eye, the zero, and the four eye. Who's got the C gap? Mm. That became different. Right. And this man also allowed us to use flow fit rules. You know, people talk about rock and roll, nest. Rope and yeah. dope, stack track fallback. It's all the same, same terminology, different terminology, but but same idea, right? And again, I talked about this, you know, more outside linebacker DB types. So we had to evolve because again, people run a four two because hey, maybe you have forty linemen, yeah, right. And, and and at places I've been, we we just we haven't. It. It's been more outside backer dime DB types. Okay, and so we so we are yes a three four fit, but what it's like mint. You know, when I say mint, yeah. it's again stolen from Georgia, right? Mm. It's that that we don't call nickel. him a Sam backer. We call yeah. him Nick or star or star. Yeah, right. It, we, we do everything with him, and so we identify that kid as a freshman, as a young pup, and we'll coach him and say, no, you're going to grow into being a nickel because we're going to do everything with you. Yep, he's got it. He's got to buzz the flat. He's got to blitz. He's got to carry two vertical. He's got to play in and out. You know, he's got to play, oh, people call it special stump, lock, whatever you want to call it, right, mm-hmm. on, on three and two. Like the nickel's got to be everything you need in space instead of, again, that four, three, what we used to call Sam linebacker when we all played high school. Yep. Right? And so then here's what else from a secondary standpoint, and I've coached secondary, I've played secondary, so secondary is near and dear to my heart. But on the last part, you know, why the mint? Because it gave us multiple coverage looks. And it is amazing what you can do with that drop jack, right? Yeah. That, that boundary, how much your, your playbook expands coverage-wise, okay, coverage-wise, when you don't have that five technique in the dirt, right? That jack is out in space and playing different type of coverages, buzz, swipe, um, or even bringing him right and pushing out the backer or rolling the safety down or whatever it may be. But whenever we found that, hey, we could drop eight, rush three and drop eight, it was amazing all the things that that came with that, right, that came with those coverage looks. And obviously it gave us the ability to bracket the X. Like you got strips three by one, we could just make what we would call a walk call where we take our jack, our boundary outside linebacker, and just walk him on top of of the X, the outside receiver. Right, that yeah. gives what two on one with the jack in the corner, and we can still load and, and and fit the box, and not have to remove the mic and wheel or two inside backer from from the box. Right, so again, that's really really good on a hash. Um, and so why the man? You know, for us, at, and when I, when I typed this a long time ago, when I was in Oklahoma, that's what we saw: 10, 11, 20, empty, one back run game, RPO. You know, so so again, I talked about perimeter run game. Um, it was what throw the flash. Throw the bubbles. Yeah. Okay. And again, I was an old four three <laughs> four two guy that every week's like, how are we going to cancel that gap to that back set to that formation to that? Huh? How are we going to cancel the A gap? <laughs> how are we going to cancel the B gap? Right. Well, if they start two by two, but they motion in, now it becomes two back. Oh no! Hey, pirate, pirate, pirate. Yep. Hey, not, not, not. You know, hey, rip, 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 slash, slash, slash. You got to start canceling gaps, right? But with this, we didn't have to because why? Four eyes in the B, the zeros in one of the A's, the four eyes in the other other B. You don't have bubbles. You don't have a shade a shade five bubble and then a shade three A gap bubble, right? Which led to making it hard for the OC because I talked about those Twitter gurus who what they always drop a four down front. Yeah, it's easy. So 
So the fun part of it was, the fun and the not fun, was we all went into Sunday because no one else at the time, at the time was really running the tight front in Oklahoma, right? We were, we, we, and I want to say we, me and, and, and Adam, um, we'd, we'd gone different places by this time. And we were the only guys who were really, really running the four eyes, right? Consistently. Now people were in double fives. They're in a five shade four eye. They're playing, playing three, four, but yeah. no one's playing four eye, a zero and a four eye, right? As a base and consistently. So one of the fun and not fun parts was, um, how is off, how our offense is going to attack us? You're sitting there Saturday and Sunday game plan. You're going, okay, how would they block this? Yeah. We spent a whole bunch of time in the old line room and the old, you know, in OC and going, well, I don't like that run game. That run game sucks. That run game's not any good. Matt, that and sounds so, like a dream come true for you. And, and so, so it, it just, it put a smile on my face. Right. And, and so then it became, because you know, offensive guys always get always get done before defensive guys. So they'd come in our room and say, "Hey, we got a run play for you." And then I'm sitting there going, "Crap! I hope they don't run this." You, you know, what I'm saying? and so so it's like, "But wait, wait! Do you guys?" And so I'd ask our old line coach, "Do you have this play in right now? Could our kids come in Monday morning and run that play?" No. So what's that mean? That means I have to teach them. So I'd have to teach them a new concept, a new run play, just for this week. Yeah. So what we do? We made the OC prepare for us. Okay. Um, so again, I, I, I talked about this. Now we're in the Texas idea. Same idea. What do we, what do I see in, in 6A DFW? 10, 11, 20 with a whole bunch. I say a whole bunch. Every team we play this year had at least one power five division one guy, whether it be the quarterback, the running back, the O-line receiver, it doesn't matter. There was at least one every week that we saw that was powerful. Um, and so, with that 3-4, what? There's always a potential for a four-man rush, whether it be from the nickel, the mic, the wheel, or the jack. And just to everything. Now, when I say everything, I know you guys up there who are up in the tundra, right, who are up in Wisconsin, Minnesota, and all the other, you go, Coach, how do you handle double tight, double wing out of this? I'm going, I don't know. So, um, you know, and then you're not having to worry about strength call. Like, do we call it a tight end? Do we call it over here? Do we, you know, because the four-man, to the four-man front, what do you always want? You want a three and a six to the tight end, the three-man surface. Well, this – Hey, four I zero four I boom, do you stay? We'll adjust everything with what? We'll adjust everything with the back end. Okay. Um, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna kinda stop sharing for a second, right quick. Is is everybody everybody good so far? Yeah, yeah. My only question, um, and we talk about this all the time because we, we ran some tight front too. How are you adjusting to the tight end? Are you synchoing it? Are you what are you doing as far as that? Yeah, yeah. So so to, to, to answer that question, okay, is we – let's say it's two by two, right? So it's twins one way and it's, you know, pro to the other, right, tight end flank. Yep. So so it's a base. I'm giving you day one. We're going to play 4 I 0 4 I, right? Like, and yep. I know you get the single calling slide and all that other. We're <laughs> going to play 4 I 0 4 I. Into the tight end, again, two by two, right? So the tight yep. end, we're going to do what we call hammer the jack. It's, hammer's our term that just means playing in the nine technique. So gotcha. the free safety is going to be – picture like a three-stack fit, Right. So picture you have a 50, zero and a 50, that free safety would be like a weak 53 stack back. So yeah. he'd be the C gap fitter. He'd be the C gap fitter on tight end out block. Okay. Does that make sense? And then the mic yeah. and will, they're in the twenties. So again, in front of me, you know, on the first level at four I zero four I, the mic's in the 20, the wheels in the 20 stacked on the guard. Then the nickel, the, the strong safety in the corner are playing three over two concept bracket quarters, yeah. some type of, of that look to twins. So that would be a base. Um, so I talked about not having to slide so, the front. So when you're in your base, you're saying your your free safety's got to be a C gap fitter if that so tight end base, turns yeah, out on the yeah. jack. Yeah, and, and I know okay. those offense hmm. scores saying I'm gonna throw number one hitch all day, I'm gonna throw number one fade all day. Yeah. Valid. hundred percent. And day one, day one, if you walked out <laughs> there for spring ball, you got it. You're right. Okay. Then, obviously, we're going to have some answers to where we can play different things and do different Correct. things. I mean, you know how it is. We're, I talk about the toolbox. Oh, right? yeah. <laughs> but but that's how we're going to um, day one fit <laughs> two by two tight end, right? Matt, what do you got cooking up? I can see you writing things down and your head's moving. So what are you? you just I'm taking just notes? trying to keep up with what's going on. <laughs> I'm taking notes. I'm trying to keep up with what's going on make sure I'm I'm learning this correctly. The so coach Gower, Matt is our note taker. As we always crack the joke, uh, I do all the video and the editing and he sits there and writes notes the whole time. If you can tell he's flipping on page pages, two. So. <laughs> but 
Well, we're good. It. If we want to continue the next piece here, I, I feel pretty good about it. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, good. Coach, if I'm, if I'm following you. along, if I'm following along, we're good. So keep it rolling. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. If I can keep up. So, so again, I'm going to go back to the screen. So if you're on YouTube, this will make more sense. If you're on, if you're driving the truck, I'll try to um, try to make it make it make sense. You know, one of the adjustments I get asked is, Coach, how do you play your odd front right? But you might want to play it from maybe an even space. Okay. So with odd spacing. Let's follow me when I say this. Odd spacing meaning what? We're in an odd. We're in a zero and two four odds. But one of our answers we've had to instead of playing a 20 backers with the mic and the wheel, one of our answers is keep the front, the 4i, 0, 4i. But we have what we call a nail call. Nail is our word because we call them the nickel, right? Nail means that that if you're in the truck driving, nail means that the nickel will come down and play like a one by one or a two by two off the tackle. Okay, and we can do this to the back, away from the back. Um, but we found ways where we can get to a four down front, right, or an even look. And in, in our, you know, our old line coach, we talk all the time, like, is this an even or an odd front? It's like, well, it got me a zero. It's an odd, but I don't like that nickel being right there close to my to my tackle, right? Um, and again, we can do this to the back, away from the back. If we call the hammer call, nail and hammer, hammer and nail, hammer would be just the opposite. So hammer would be where the jack's doing it, okay? And and now the wheel pulls the string. So now the wheel's going to bow, okay? The wheel's going to bow because the jack's hammered down is like the, the five technique. You keep in the front, 4i, 0, 4i. The mic's in your zero, and now your nickel's playing the apex, right? Yep. And you can do this just by call, by the back, by the tight end, whatever you want to do. But we found some ways where, again, we don't have to move the front, but we can get to what might look like a four down with a five technique walked up, but playing a four eye, playing a zero, and playing a four eye, whether it be from the field, the boundary, the strong, the weak, um, and obviously adjusting the mic and the wheel based upon the nail and or hammer call. Okay. And then another kind of, I say nuance, is, is when we play a four eye and a four eye, but we play a shade as well. So instead of playing a zero, so playing zero out of this tight mint stuff, okay, we can also play a shade. And one way you can play a shade is away from the back, right? So picture, let's say it's two by two, right? So it's doubles, so it's easy to picture. So it's doubles, and the back is on the defensive right, okay? Two by two, back on defensive right. And the shade, we, instead of playing zero, we put the shade to our left or away from the running back. So what does that give me? Now that kind of gives me a, a, a gate or a wall, yeah. For where the back may step, especially if you're getting zoned. Because what's going to happen? You're going to get the bend back on the zone. Okay. Because uh, again, for what for for what I see, honestly, we have answers for how we play one back pull and 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 stuff like that. But um, you know, it's still what a four eye, a zero and a four eye, but it's a four eye shade, four eye, and you can put that shade to the tight end, away from the tight end, to the back, away from the back, right? And you're still playing your overhangs your nickel and your jack or whatever, your star and your your bandit or whatever you want to call them, still playing your three over two concept to twins. So yeah. some of those nuances, some of those little things that we found as, as this front has evolved um, has been uh, re really, you know, really good for us. Um, and, and so, and, and again, what's the beauty? Those D linemen don't know because it's four eyes. Right? Yeah. When we made one 12 inch adjustment, you go from a zero to a shade. Well, coach, what do you want me to shade? Do you want me to the back, to away from the back, tied in? It's, and honestly, we tell him based upon the call, right? I mean, we, we do that. But um, you notice that not a lot has has had to change from, man, I need a six and a three. What if the tight end goes over here? Hey, slide, slide, slide. Yeah. Hey, rip, rip, rip. Hey, slant, slant, slant. Slash, slash, slash. Tun, tun, not, not. Um, and again, that kind of goes back to, why we went to this because yeah. you know offense coordinators what do they want we want to bang the a gap and the b gap right and again the perimeter run game throw that thing out there right? yeah or, or and i know jet like people you know ready to go and they pop yeah. the jet i mean i get it but um you know again we, we've got those overhangs who become the the nine technique or the the the, the edge of the defense right so um those are a couple of nuances that, that we have found that, that we've had some success with that we like um, that, again, have a lot of adjustments to it. And another adjustment we found, you and I have talked about this, is the three-high stuff. Yeah. Right? 
And so I'm going to touch on that a tiny bit where, and every, we were doing this in 2016. And again, people were doing it before you don't act like you've invented this, right? <laughs> we, we had a really good year. We were, we just won district championship. We, and we had a good, we were undefeated. We were trying to do some stuff, put some stuff on tape, you know, that trying to keep, keep it likable and learnable. Okay. And we were playing some three high safety stuff with the same personnel on the field. And, but what, what did we do? We didn't change our front. We kept our yeah. four eye or zero and four eye. And we were still playing some of our base cover stuff a little bit differently, but it was week eight, nine, 10. And we had two of those three opponents who were literally air raid. I mean, throwing it all over. Yeah. <laughs> right? It didn't matter. D and D, it didn't matter where it was. They were empty. They were throwing it, chunking it. And we played some three high. One, trying to put some stuff on the field. Yeah. Two, making it likable and learnable. And three, giving this air raid stuff back in 16. How would you how would you do that? You know, what's your spacing look like now with three high safeties instead of yeah. just two? And so um the beauty of this was was we didn't have to change the front, right? We we didn't have to to play a four eye shade five or a five zero five, right? Like we we were able to keep our front. And our D-line coach is out there going, I'm doing the same drills I've done since spring ball. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And, but for us, you know, our backer secondary coaches, we were having a blast. So, Oh, I'm sure, yeah. So, it, you know, it led to the adjustments we could have just by one call. Leaving the same personnel, first down, hey, we're going to be mint, tight front, too high, let's go. Second down, now we're going to be three high. And it was not something we lived and died in, okay? Yeah. It was a package. It was, a, it was something that we were going to run – 12 to 15 plays a night. Right. And we didn't get, again, we didn't get to it until late. Well, week eight, week nine during a really good run during with a really good team. Yeah. You know, so, so how many coverages since if, if you're only running 15 times a game, how many coverages did you carry out of it? So at the time, at the time we really only carried about three to be honest. Um, and it was not like a pressure package. We didn't do exotics out of it. It yeah. was, we're going to have, a couple, I say three. We're gonna have a, quarter, a one quarters. We're gonna have a two three by one adjustments. Okay, four I guess. One quarters, <laughs> two three by one adjustments, and then in a, a basically a cover. How we rolled cover three one way or the other. Yeah, uh, kind of like a three cloud three trap, depending on field boundary, right? So I guess we had four. And again, it wasn't like a pressure. It wasn't like a we're gonna get crazy and bring six out of three high. It was because we were. Drawn, you know how it is. We're drawing stuff on the board, right? Yeah. And, uh, we were having a good year, and we were kind of getting delirious a little bit. <laughs> and we we got to that point. I'll tell you what else? We got to that point where we run our cut ups and our t and, and God, we're doing this a lot. And it yeah. was good. It was successful. Don't be wrong. But what are OC seeing in us? Yeah. Like, they always do it to this formation. They're always bringing this guy. So we ran our cut ups in our in our cell scout after. Well, after each game, that's nothing. Side note, side note, talked about this. Put in the data, guys, after each game, put in the data. Self-scout yourself after each yeah. game, <laughs> okay, please, because you're going to get to week six and week seven, and you know how it is. We get to the grind of the season, and and we run, and we were 7-0 at the time. We just won this championship, and I, I ran our data, our self-scout, our, our cut-ups, and I'm sitting there at Saturday night. Uh, this is before kids. Saturday night in our couch, and I'm going, "Uh oh, I hope nobody finds this." Yep. <laughs> we were doing, we were doing a lot of stuff, but there was a couple things like I didn't realize I was calling it this much. To certain <laughs> things, right? And and I'm going, "Oh my goodness, I hope nobody finds this answer." And and so. All law here kind of came to three high. So I went on Sunday. I was like, all right, let's do some stuff. Let's do some fun stuff. And yeah, we game plan, but it turned into who's got the pin last type of deal with the offense, you know, and so, so it was good. Um, I enjoyed it, but it led to that, right? Playing it it's always better that you find those things mm -hmm. instead of someone else. And, and again, I was like, don't get me wrong. Have your kids that cover you up, that cover your butt. Right, <laughs> I've been sitting there for seven ball games, going, "Ooh, I got some tendencies." Yeah, and, and you know, we, I, I need to find, we need to find something different, something for people to work on. 
And yeah, so we actually um, had a whole episode. Um, episode two, we had Coach Avery on. He kind of did it offensively, but he talked a lot about self scout. Now his was more geared towards the off season, but it's very important in the off season or in during season as well. But he talked about the same thing. Offensively, they're looking for – he was like, look, we figured out that 80% of our yards come on 10 plays. We need to practice those 10 plays. Well, defensively, you need to look at that same thing and go, if we're doing the same thing 80% of the time, we may want to change something up because we're predictable. So, And, and that, that goes back to the whole you know myth, right? Go back, look at your cut-ups, put in your self-scout. Yep. You know, again, if you're playing the same people that we're playing – they're going they're to find, find out. Yeah. <laughs> they're really good coaches. They got really good players. If you're playing the same three by one coach. <laughs> Correct. You're going to get beaters. If you're in that, that mini, that stubby, whatever you want to call it, you're going to get a corner by three. It's, it's coming automatically. And, and that's, that's also where our stand up pack, we call it renegade or renegade stand up package was so good because it was so unpredictable of who's coming. I told the kids line up wherever you want. Move around <laughs> radar, you know, radar defense. They're people yeah, that yeah. I mean, they do, but you talk about giving kids autonomy, <laughs> the other side yeah. note, taking notes, give kids autonomy. You know, when a kid comes in on Monday morning, coach, I've got a great renegade blitz. And you know, yeah, you run practice, fun. you practice, oh, you yeah. practice on Tuesday, okay? And and when it hits, because you scripted it for <laughs> to hit, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And they feel confidence in that they came up with the call. They came up with a blitz, a pressure. And yeah. You practice it. And that buys in. They buy into you, right, as a coordinator, as a coach. And and so now I'm not going to let them scheme up first and 10, right? <laughs> but, but when it comes to third and nine, third and 10, and packages and personnel and blitzes. And, and you know, I was asking, well, why do you, why do you, why do you think? And some kids be like, because it looks cool. And then I was starting, why <laughs> yeah. do you want to do this? Well, coach, because the pass pro and kids, and you figure this out, kids that are in your program. Well, coach, they always pass pro this way, right? Or when this receiver's here, they always throw it to him. So let's bring pressure from that side, right? And that yeah. doesn't happen often. Don't get me wrong, because you know, nine percent of the time, kids bit because it looks cool, and I know I'm going to come free on the blitz. Yeah, <laughs> like you know, a kid will always come yeah. up and he'll drop some cross dog blitz or whatever, and. And it just so happened that somebody else had to be, you know, the sacrificial guy and he comes yeah. scot free. Right. <clears throat> so, um, but, but, you know, talk about autonomy and kids buying in, create packages that get young kids on the field. Part two, yeah. part two, let them have some fun with the defense, you know, and, and there were, I've got to, I have got, there are times where we, we made a, a, a you call it, a you call it. Yeah. And 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 I and I designate, hey, you call it my point to a kid, hey, you call it. And sometimes it goes good, sometimes it goes bad. But as a coach, <laughs> you gotta lay your head down at night and say, You gave him the freedom to call this. Right? Yeah. And it's ballsy. And, That's ballsy, coach. Well, yeah, I've learned that <laughs> and yes, point the finger at me. Good play, but well, bad play yeah. point at me. Good play, they made it. Right. But but at the same time, I'm, I'm trying to give kids autonomy and, and, and leadership and ownership of, hey, you know, 22, hey, boom, you call it. You call it. He's calling yeah. the, the you know, and I coach with Matt at Oviedo here in, in, in Florida. And Matt, I mean, we have a great story in overtime where the kids told you to play on the two-point conversion to win it, right? It was You were trying to call something else in the huddle, and the O-line looked at you and said, said what? Yeah, our offensive coordinator uh, called a play-action <laughs> pass. I mean, we, we – We've been dogging this team. We, uh, man, we were tied, I believe it was, or we were down by one were with down by seconds one. to go. We came yeah. back. We were 27 20. points in the hole. Yeah. We came back <laughs> into the fourth quarter. We got 16 seconds left, and we call a play action to go for two, and the kids play, please no, can we just run power again? They just want to run power, the O-line. So I said, let's do it. I'm changing it. Let's run kid power. walked into the you end guys zone, got by it. the way. Kid walks, walks in. right in. <laughs> to win the game. They believed so. in it. And when the kids believe in it and they are asking for it, you got to give them that as a coach. You got to give them that, that control over their own destiny. Right. And, and, you know, there, there was, um, again, another thing stolen, right? Lincoln Riley came down to the Texas Coast Association, um, convention and talked about that where he's sitting in his meeting on a Thursday, right? They practice all week and two days before game. He's sitting there going, okay, quarterback, what calls do you like? 
like he had a you call it menu. I think he called something else, but it was a you call it menu, and it was yeah, I don't know, five or seven or eight plays. And you're kind of and, and he's asking the question, you know, or you listen to him at his clinic, you're asking the quarterback, why do you like that play? You know what, like what if they run this? It's not good. It's like because I know I can bang it in there. Because I know the timing. <laughs> Right, and I know if they do get this, I know I'm getting pressure from here, and I'm going to bang it in the window. Yeah, right. And so, and even Coach Riley was talking. You know, you listen to him as a claim to the defensive guy. You're sitting there going, "I'm going to let this kid who's yeah. got a hold of my paycheck let this let this fly against Texas." <laughs> and State. So, um, but but I thought that was really really good. But you yeah. call it on you, you know, and and. Um, it tells the kids what's easy, what's learnable. And we talk about keep it likable and learnable. That's yeah. one way to do it. Oh, yeah. And I know you're you're sitting there and those headsets go really quiet when you, you know, you do this and those headsets go really quiet and you're all going, oh, this goes bad. <laughs> I, I love I, that likable and learnable. We've That's all awesome been there philosophy. when that headset's gone quiet. Right. Here we go. Let's go. <laughs> but, uh. But no, so so to keep going, kind of want to talk some X and O's. This, if that's all right, oh, absolutely. Okay, so again, if you're if you're on YouTube, this will be easy to watch. Here we go. If you're not, what this is about? If you're in the truck on the podcast, <laughs> creating five, creating matchups, right? Getting getting. You know, we all call blitz to blitz, right? But what if they slide to it? That sucks, right? What if they pick it up? So I'm going to talk about creating matchups, getting better matchups in your pressure and your blitz game. Okay, and I'm going to talk about how we do what's called a five-man overload or what we term as an open blitz. Now, people have called this BTF, right? Blitz the formation. Okay, which yeah. is the same concept, same idea. So what an open blitz is, is we're going to count. We're going to count the open side. And what I mean by that, so picture center, guard, guard, tackle, and tackle, right? So picture the five line and – and we're going to count the open side. So let's – we talked about pro twin earlier, right, where it's, you know, twins one way and, and tight end flanger to the other. So we're going to bring what we call an open blitz, and we just call it that, open, open blitz. And what that means is we're going to bring pressure, whether it be a four-man rush or a five-man pressure, to the open side, meaning what? We're going to blitz the formation away from the tight end, right, yeah. or from the three-man surface. Okay, does that make sense? So now let's picture that, hey, it's two by one. Like it's twin open and split back. Twin open and split back. Now where are we going to bring it? Now we're going to bring it away from twins because where would be the open side? It would be away from twins. But, Coach, there's no tight end. You're right. You're right. Because there's no tight end, it's two by one split back. Now we're going to bring it where? Now we might bring corner, you know, crash, yeah. cobra, whatever you want to call it, right? But, But now – Hey, you brought in a tight end, a sniffer, and we call open blitz. We're going to go away from the sniffer. So now this time, because we're bringing it from the field, because sniffer's to the boundary, okay, now we're going to bring only a four-man rush. Yeah. Right? So you work, and it's, again, BTF. You are you're you are combating their their formation by blitzing it, right? And and you can do this on first down. You can do this on, on third and long, right? And you can build this off your day one install. So you call field pressure, weak pressure, boundary pressure, strong pressure, weak pressure. Like you have that in your menu, in your ABC, one, two, three menu, right? But you can also say, hey, you remember how we put in this pressure on, you know, August 3rd, right? Well, on October 3rd, because your opponent does this. Yeah. And I call open blitz. We're going to blitz where? Oh, coach, we're going to blitz away from the three-man surface. Great. You guys got it. So what do you do? You count the three. You look at the center as zero, and you count to the right. Coach, there's one, two, three. So what's on the other side? There's only one, two. Okay, so where's the blitz coming from? Coming from away from the tight end, right? This is not this is not new. This is something, again, that I've seen. I've learned that's been a lot of success for us. Um, so, again, if you're in the truck, I'm, I'm, I'm showing video here. So picture it's two by one, like it's twin open, and it's split back. So quarterback and the gun split back. And what we're doing is we're going to play quarters – Nickel strong, uh, nickel strong safety corner, three on two to twins, right? Some type of quarters concept. And then what we're going to do is we're in our, our four zero four look, okay? And we're going to bring our Will, which is our weak side 20 backer, and our Jack. And we're going to bring that five-man pressure. Now, because of this, we're not just spinning cover three. We can still play three over two because mm -hmm. what can we do? Because we closed, we closed the, the blitz away from the twins, 
right? The A gap's close to the four, the B gap's close to the will, the jacks and the C gap. The mic would be in the B gap strong. So the nickel doesn't have a fit, right? He can play pass. Yeah. So you play true heavy down with that star nickel in this video. I know you probably can see it in the podcast, obviously, but the nickel's too tight to the box. So if you're on YouTube, there's the look. And honestly, we X'd it. So in this case, what did we do? We sent the four to the A. We pirated or ripped or slashed, whatever word you want to use. The jack went from C to B, and the will went X. He wrapped behind the jack, right? So yeah. again, what is this? All this is is open blitz. Okay, and again, I'm showing the same deal, right? Same formation, same formation called open blitz. So now this time we're running regular NCAA, right? So we're going to slant. So we're going to, you know, NCAA, fire zone, whatever you want to call it. But again, playing quarters. Like we're not going to spin cover three here. So it's twin open, two by one, split back. Same thing with the D lineman. Mm -hmm. But now we're going to keep the edge with the jack and the will, the weak side 20 backer is going to become the B gap rusher like everybody in America does. Right. And another reason we did this is this particular opponent, if you notice the slide, we knew we'd game plan that open blitz was going to be really, really good against this formation because we knew we were going to get full slide to the twins. Yeah. So you guys were watching the video, look where the slide was. Not only were we bringing it to the open side, we were also bringing it because we knew what kind of slide protection we were going to get. Coach, uh, how are you guys accounting for the backs here? Uh, clearly, okay, there the question. safety goes with them. Yeah, because so, you're playing so, quarters and not rolling three, how do you account for those two backs? Yeah, so in this case, it becomes zero. Notice the free safety. See the boundary safety right there? It becomes like zero. See him taking, right? Gotcha. Okay, now let's say the back stayed. He didn't motion. Okay, obviously now, if he pushes to the field, the nickel will take him, right? If number two, if the or the the running back to the split, if he were to flare, we would flare control or flare peel this. Gotcha. As a, as a right. base. But because <clears throat> because the jack staying on it, right, <clears throat> it wasn't his guy to start. So who's yeah. going to take it? Gotcha. The backside safety, yeah. It ta it becomes like zero to the boundary. Not yep. kind of. No, it's zero to the boundary. Yeah, I, I, we used to do something similar to this where we, we called this. It was always a – I was in a four down front, but – we always call quarters, you know, to the field, and then it was always the lock to the boundary, no matter what it was. It's right. very similar to this, just out of four down stuff. But so you know, we'd we bring the corner, and then we got to lock the safety and all that stuff. So yeah, right. And so here you go again. You know, it's second <laughs> ten, right? So now what are we doing? We're doing out a four down front. There's a five. There's a shade. There's a three and a five. Yeah. Now we're going to bring five man pressure. But guess who we're going to get involved now? Now we're going to get involved the corner. So again, we're in a five and a shade. To the to because now let me back up. So formation wise, it's Trey. So it's twins, and the tight end is to the twin side, right? Yeah. The snipper to the twin side. So now what are we doing? We're bringing weak side pressure out of our four down. So you can do it out of three down or four down. So we have a five and a shade to the field or to the strong side of the snipper, who's to, who's to Trey, who's to the twin side. And we have a three five weak, and we're going to pirate. The three's going to A, the five's going to B, and we're going to bring the fifth guy as the corner, the non box count guy. Right. And again, what we're playing press quarters. So notice the field, you even see the corner he's checking. I'm playing press quarters here. Yeah. So anyway, open blitz, <laughs> open blitz. It, it is, has been really, really good for us. Um, and it's, and it's easy. It's very, very easy to install and implement. And you tell the kids, Hey man, it's count the three. Where's yeah. three coach over there. Okay. So where are we bringing it? Opposite. And again, it doesn't have to be five man pressure. It can be a four man rush. Like yeah. there's there were some weeks where like, okay, the tight end's over here, five man rush. If he's over here, four man rush. Yeah. And so it's kind of like the old buddy Ryan, you know, uh, I say auto front coverage, right? But it was auto blitz coverage. It was yeah. ABC, right? And and so we just told the kids, hey, open, open blitz meant what? Count two or three from the center. The center zero guard tackle. There's two. Guard tackle. Oh, there's a sniffer. He's on that side. Okay, great. Bring it away from him. So it's it's easy to create that matchup. Um, uh, and then then the last thing that's going go to go to ball talk. Okay, um, is is again talking about uh, well. 
talking about third down packages, right? Can creating third down packages and developing them. So why third down talked about this? It, you got to practice it every day. Every yeah. day we're going to practice third down. We're going to take a five or 10 minute period every day and practice third down. Because it can't be like first or second down. And one of the reasons we love it, because we found a way, find ways to get that, that young pup sophomore or two sophomores on the field. I'll give you an example. If it's third and nine and our nose is on the field, and I love our nose, <laughs> but unless he is like some dude D1 guy, he's coming off the field on third and nine. Yeah. Which now what? Now gives us the ability to bring in that young pop sophomore who you're like, he may not be our top 11, but he can be on kickoff, punt, kickoff return, right? He's on the bus. He's traveling. And you know he's going to be a good player. He's just 15 years old right now. Well, give him a job. And how do you give him a job? You get him invested, you get him bought in, and you give him a one or two jobs in this package, you do this. Yeah. Right? And so it, if, you, if you see this on YouTube, obviously, it says find a way to get the fourth DB or fifth DB, the fourth linebacker or fifth DB on the field. I told you, we've had packages, guys, where it was like, um, gosh, zero three eight one night. And then there was one where it was um, one four six. I mean, we've done this with, with all sorts of people, right? So it gives those guys a job and it creates buy-in. Not only that, it makes it makes it hard for the offense. You know, one of the best compliments I ever got, he said, when you guys got that stand-up stuff, I didn't know who was coming, who was dropping, who was blitzing, <laughs> where you were blitzing from. And, and so that was one of the biggest, best compliments I ever got. Um, we're always going to have more than one third-down package, okay? And you say, is it two, is it three, is it four? Is it? We're going to have at least two. Yeah. Like, that's different. Right. And when I mean third down package, obviously we're going to have, you know, the, the whole penny and nickel and dime and quarter packages that everybody talks about. Right. But we're going to have different packages, and different code words and names to tell people what who's on the field and what they're doing. Yeah. Right? And again, you're making the offense prepare for those multiple pa packages and you're going to create one new wrinkle a week. You know, uh, Dan Lanning talks about this, how they run the same pressure path, but from a different presentation. Right. And, and people talk about pre-snap presentation versus post-snap demonstration. Let me say that again. Pre-snap presentation versus post-snap demonstration, right? And I think that's crucial that you say, all right, kids, hey, this week we're going to run the same pressure, but we're going to do it from this look, hmm. right? Oh, yeah. So you say, hey, week five, remember how you ran this pressure? Yep. Well, now we're going to now we're gonna fast forward seven days, run the same pressure, but now I want you to line up this way. Yeah, and – Coach, that's so important. I, you know, I was breaking down Wyoming the other day in their bowl game because I was interested and I heard about their defense. And you know, at a tight front, one of those simulated pressures everybody loves is the Bears one rat. Yeah. Um, and they run Bears one rat, but they showed it out of the boss front where the three guys right. were overload on one side. And then right. he crossed face and then the linebacker came back across. And I was like, ooh, that's a really good way to run Bears one rat. Right. Just a different presentation, though, Coach. But it was the same one I've seen a thousand times at a tight front. And, and that's that's the deal. It's like, you know, I talk about this again. If you always line up in a five shade, three and a five, yes, you can pirate and you can not and you can ton and you can twist and loop. You can do all that stuff, right? Yeah. But it's still what? It's still two over here and two over there. Yeah. Versus you getting a load front or a boss <laughs> front or whatever everybody wants to call it, right? Or you're getting really wide fives and wide nines, right? Yeah. Now what? Correct. And okay. that's and, the goal is to stress guys out like Matt right now. That's I hope so, he, he's sweating gonna, a little bit, coach. So I'm gonna I'll, show uh, you, I'm gonna I'll say you. it's a it's a lot like what we used to do <laughs> offensively, trying to run as many different formations as we possibly could and keeping the same core run concepts to be able to run out of all of those formations. To give us that multiplicity, it looks like you're doing on the same thing on the defensive side. And I'm going to show you some film. Again, you guys who are in the truck, you know, you, you, you get on YouTube, it'll make more <laughs> Better sense. Better get on YouTube. <laughs> okay, so get develop the third down packages, right? So, so I'm going to create a matchup on this one, third down, to generate using three rushers to take up your 4-0 Okay, I'm going to show you how, how we do that, right? So using my three rushers of some sort, D linemen, backers, whoever it is, using three rushers I had to take up your four O-line. Okay, and the first one is what we would call Lombardi, okay? And the reason we call it Lombardi is because I have to coach them how to do this, okay? And <laughs> and 
this was one that that we I say again somebody's come up with it, but we thought it was really cool because we hadn't seen it. We kind of came up with it on our own. This is in Oklahoma, so what we're doing we're in a it's third and you know nine miles, and so we are in a five. Oh, well, I'll say five. We're in a wide five. Would y'all agree? You guys <laughs> looking here on YouTube, right, or on the puddle film? Five zero and a five. Okay, and this one is where we are coaching our kids, our Mike and our Will, and it's going to become a four man rush, but and play whatever coverage you want. But we don't know, and they don't know who's going, which Mike or Will against an inside backer rush. So picture it's a five zero to five. It's third and long, and we're going to create a four man rush based upon your slide. So whatever you O line slide, you're wrong. So example, one of these Mikes or Wills or two inside backers, one of those guys is going to go. So picture. Picture that the old lineman spinner turns, and I'm and I'm going to go to the tight copy here again. You can play whatever coverage. We're playing really, really, really loose buzz quarters here. Really loose buzz quarters against third and twenty, third and twenty-five. And what we're doing is the Mike and Will are reading the slide. We have a five, we have a zero, and a five wide five because it's third and twenty. And the Mike and Will are reading the slide. Okay, if the slide comes, or, excuse me, the slide goes away from me, I become the insert because why? What's going to happen? The tackle is going to base out on the five technique. Well, there's one for that one, right? Then what do you have? The other four, the other four, guard center, guard tackle slid to the right. Their offensive right or defensive left. So now my Mike backer is going to run through, run through yeah. where the slide came from, right? Does that make sense, right? So again, yeah. it's tackle, guard center, guard tackle. And from a defense perspective, they slid left or offensive right. So my inside backer who's lined up on the right, he's going to be the insert. Did I make that make sense, guys? Yeah. So what does that give me? <clears throat> and we actually personnel this. The guy who has his hand in the dirt right there to the field, he's actually an outside linebacker. Why he has his hand in the dirt, it's up to him because, again, give kids autonomy. All right, he wanted to get in the 40-yard stance, which that's great, whatever. But what's it give me? It gives me a one-on-one -on -one with an outside linebacker and a, and a speed tackle. So, again, we talked about generating pressure, taking up four blockers, your four alignment, for my three. So, okay, if you notice, what do we have? Tackle guard on one, center guard on two. There's your four alignment for what? A five technique ones, and a zero. Yeah. <laughs> okay? And I've got what I want. I've got my matchup right there with a fast speed well, defensive end, outside linebacker guy, <laughs> who obviously makes a sack. So from the end zone copy, you'll see it even better. So here we go. We're reading the slide. This guy and this guy. And again, if the slide goes away from them, I become the fourth in insert. And again, we're not bringing five or six. or We're not max blitzing this. It's very, very easy. So again, we talk about four linemen being taken up for even two of my guys. <laughs> I okay. mean, Coach, you, you also get a backer one-on-one -on -one with a running back, which should be a dream come true as well. Yes, and so you got two one-on-ones here. Somebody's got to win, right? And obviously there are five techniques in the field one because we converted him from an outside backer to playing five. Now let's do the same thing. Now what do you know? Same front, yes? Same look, right? Yep. It's third and 12. Now do the opposite of it. Again, still Lombardi, but we taught it this week. Hey, guys. Now, instead of as the slide comes to you, I'm sorry, slide goes away, now do it where the slide comes to your side. Well, Coach, why would I want to do that? Okay, so you'll notice, and the Mike and Will, they hate when I call this type of, okay, because they know they're going to be like the sacrificial guy, right? But what happens when the Mike and Will, when one of those guys gets slid to, yes, you're going to get picked up, but what happens? If you'll notice, I've got the guard center guard on who? my nose, yeah. and one of my inside backers. So I've taken what? Three linemen for your what? For my two. Two, two D linemen, yep. Okay. Then what? What do I have on my edges? Yeah, one-on-ones, coach. I got one-on-ones with two outside backer guys that I want one-on-ones with. Right? So, again, picture. It's it's a you know center guard tackle and then obviously guard tackle. So it's trips, actually. It's trip formation. And we're in a 5-0-5. Five, five. It's third and 12. 
and the Mike and Will are reading the slide. This time the slide came to them or came to one of my backers. I mean, I tell the backer, if the slide comes to you this time, this week, the way I practice it, the way we practice, the way we game plan it, you insert. So now you picture it where the guard center guard are taking the nose and the mic backer, which again, I've got my five techniques, what? One-on-one -on -one and one-on-one. -on -one. And it causes panic and chaos for the quarterback. <laughs> okay. Every time. So what do you notice? I mean, look at this dude. We finally got this guy of a 40 stance. It took about four weeks, but he finally figured it out. Hey, buddy, I don't want you to line up on the shoulder. I want you to be – guys, what would y'all say? Is he, what, three yards outside that tackle? He's in a ghost nine. Is that what we okay. would call that? That's – yeah. And so <laughs> if you notice, the, the outside – I'm sorry, the, the inside backer, okay, if you'll notice, he's kind of hesitant, and they're talking. Like, look, like, like those two are talking, like, I really hope the slide doesn't come to me. <laughs> right. And so they figured out, like, they hated this idea, but the two ends. So you probably, you probably can't tell, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going to show you from, um, from this clip right quick. Okay. So Coach, what, what do you have in them key on that? When, when they're looking at the slide, what, what specifically do you have them keying? Okay, so so we're actually in this case we're actually looking at the guard, right? So if the guard, so if let me back, let me let me back up. So as a base, we're looking at the center, right? And we're seeing which guard attacks the nose. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. So actually, the center is going to attack the nose, obviously. Then, then because of this look, if the guard goes here, what's that mean? That means my buddy's going. And I'm going to replace. Okay. Then you have this one. Renegade. The radar. We call it Renegade. Okay. And here's the deal. It's simple. It's fun. It, kids love it. But people got to work on it. Offense corners got to work on it. And you use the best 11 guys you have. Whether that be the – and some OCs, all, you know – I always go to the head coach and you'll see and say, hey, can I have this kid? And I've, and I've been told yes, <laughs> I've been told no. You want the best 11 dudes you got in your roster, the fastest, best speed guys you got. And kids love it. It breaks up. You know how it is. All right, guys, we're going to inside running day. All right, guys, we're going to seven on seven. This breaks up the monotony of practice, and they love to just move around and, and shake around. And it creates confusion for the offense. And, guys, we've rushed two. We've rushed three. We've rushed four. We, who's blitzing? Who's dropping? Right? <laughs> And so why is it effective? You know, we talk about the original sim pressure, right? You know, the boss front to load front. Yes, right? Yep. Well, we were on sim pressure, and we didn't even know we were running it. Like, nobody called it a simulated back in these days, right? <laughs> we just call it, hey, stand up, move around, look ridiculous, and blitz whenever the snap happens. Yeah. Right? And so why is it effective? It, one, gets your speed guys on the field. Two, it makes the offense prepare. Three, we talk about that pre-snap. Pre-snap presentation versus post-snap demonstration, right? The original sim pressure and never giving the same pre-snap, never giving the same pre-snap look twice, right? We want it to look like this, but it plays or blitzes into this, okay? And you're not doing the same thing over and over. And you get all 11 dudes, like we've run this, where the corner and the field safety blitz, right? The corner and the nickel blitz. <laughs> right, I mean, we we've got all eleven positions somehow, some way involved in this pressure package. So I'll show you. So so here's one. Now I'm going to cheat on this one. This one's right before half. Like this is the play right before half. Okay, but but what do you notice? And this uh, kid, like we, like one guy's got his hand in the dirt. <laughs> yep, exactly. Exactly. And we even asked him, why is your hand dirt? Because I wanted it to be. Okay, great. <laughs> so you notice what? What would you call this? You align? Like, okay, I can count. There's one, two, three, four, five guys in the box. We're bracketing this guy to the boundary. Okay. And we run what? Now, we don't run this correctly, to be honest. Yeah, they didn't get across. Our pass are not any good. We run an, we run what? A cross dog, four, four man cross dog blitz. Yes? Yep. Okay. With the with the rat with the spot on the back, but we hit home because they don't know how to pick it up again. Our path is not any good. We screw it up, but 
he gets pressured and they left six in protection and we brought four. Yeah. Same deal. Okay. Now all 11 are standing up. Now what? Now as we go, let's go to the, the, the tight copy. Okay. Of these three right here, which one's coming and which two are dropping? Which two are coming and which one's dropping? Or which three are coming and what are these three going to do? Yeah. Okay. So again, could we put them all up in the line and said, all right, all five of you get over here. And when you get over here, sure, we could have. But to make it fun for our kids, we told them, dude, I don't care if you start on lane six of the track. <laughs> and we tell them that. Like, <laughs> like, like, and I, and I was with these kids for a long time. Like, I've known these kids since junior high at this, in this video. And we would, and then practice, they would test my limits. Like, they would test I'm my sure. blood pressure. Like, <laughs> like, how far can I get? And then be able to get to my, you know, the alignment versus assignment deal, right? And even in practice, boy, you talk about checking your own blood pressure. And I'm sitting there going, if you start there and don't get to the <laughs> pressure, I'm going to lose my mind. And so um, I think they were just kind of testing me in the, you know, during practice and know that I'd lose their my mind during the game. So this is kind of a good look that you're going to see, right? So even if these three are two coming or three coming or none, Real quick for people listening, we got trips to the field, yep. and uh, he's got two pods of three guys on each side, basically of the center. So this is what coach is explaining here. Yeah. So in this look, this look is I've got so the ball's on the twenty-eight yard line, okay, and I've got three guys to the trip side, and I'm not talking about the corner, the nickel, the strong. I'm not talking about them. I have let's call it a backer, a backer, and a backer, all three in a little <laughs> triangle diamond within a yard of each other, right? Yeah. Okay, and again, we've got it to where all three are dropping, two are dropping, one are dropping, and or no, all are coming, right? And then to the weak side, to the boundary or the single side, I've got basically a zero, what's a zero backer at five yards, and then I would have another guy standing up as a two, another guy standing up as a five right next to each other, right? Would that be a fair assessment? Yep, absolutely. <laughs> And they're moving around. And here we go again where we run. Now we ran the pressure better after we, we've had a little uh, oh, a little Coach Gower influence talk. Let's call it that <laughs> much, right? And so now we run the pressure better. Same crosstalk stunt that you saw earlier, yes? Yep. Yeah, it's a little more sound that time. <laughs> yeah. And again, there are times – I'm not worried about run fits on this, right? Yeah. It's third and nine. If you run inside zone, you get five yards, great. Four than five on the 30-yard line, punt. Yep. Okay, well, Coach, are you, are you calling this like you would call a normal one? What do you mean? Like, whatever your cross-dog blitz is, or is that just, hey, the you know, the package is renegade, but we're still running, you know, dog X or, you know, so, X-dog so, or whatever? So, our, our – and I'm from Oklahoma. We have Native American terms. Okay. Right? Yeah. And and so uh, our renegade package, our blitzes are Native American terms. Okay. Okay. So I'll I'll, I'll just kind of leave it at that. Um, now, okay, old line coaches, it's doubles, right? So again, it's third and twelve. It's doubles. Now, how would you identify this? It's just now, a hodgepodge. We, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We used to call it the Ephem Squad. Because we didn't know where the F they were going to line up or go. <laughs> so now what? Now, now, and I this is one of those, hey, I guessed right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I guessed right. I've got two spies on the back because we had to because he's a Division One running back, right? So <laughs> what are we doing? If he stayed in, if he stayed in and blocked, we went blitz, blitz. Yeah. Okay? If he went out, if he went out, it became a two-man rush. See it? Yeah. So again, if he stayed in, it becomes a four man rush. If he went out, it became a two man rush and we double spied him. Yes, we had to double spy <laughs> this kid because he was really good. Works out though. For those of you okay. listening, they just try to throw a swing right away out of the backfield and he's got two guys all over the guy running the swing <laughs> right away. So so you know, we're in an hour and twenty. I, I talk about ten more minutes, and we'll call it good at that. I mean, I can do this with you guys all night. But yeah, no, uh, I mean, coach, we can bring you back on some other time, and we'll cover the rest of it. So, well, absolutely. I hope people aren't bored. Um, I you promise know, you, they're not bored. 
Okay. Or, um, or they're in the wrong podcast if they're bored by this stuff. <laughs> well, you know, you never know. People are like, this is good. This sucks. This isn't, you know, and, and, and so, so, you know, one of the reasons we connect is I saw one of your Twitter videos. I was like, these dudes are cool. And so. <laughs> That's all um, we want to do. We just miss so, football. We're not coaching right now. And um, I don't know if you saw the the argument that Coach Vass got in with someone on our, our thread one time. The guy <laughs> called us whiteboard warriors. And so me and Matt, we don't care. We laugh at things. I, we think we're going to make whiteboard warrior shirts and just wear them around. <laughs> so, so great segue. Let's talk about that. So we're going to move kind of in, in the next 10, 12, 15 minutes, we're going to move into about coaching off the field, right? Yeah. And for me, I think it's really important that young coaches, we were all young coaches at one time, right? Guys have been in this 12, 10, 12, 15, 20, 30 years. You had a that first year, right? Your first coaching job. Yeah. We were all young at one point. Okay. And depending on what day it is, I feel like I'm still young in this game. And then there's some days I'm going. Mold. <laughs> I've been doing it this long. So, um, in saying all that, I kind of want to talk about, you know, climbing the coaching ladder. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and what, and what that means. And, and so oh, to, did start, we lose him? To, to start, um, you know. The first time on the podcast, we lost somebody. <laughs> coach we lost you for a second there we heard climbing the ladder and that was it oh hello hello yeah we're, we got you now okay all right we got Weird. you we're so, back <laughs> so we're talking about climbing the ladder right when we're all young we're trying to make it and get to this job and that job and i want to be a coordinator i want to be a head coach and, and 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 i've never been a head coach okay don't get me wrong that's, that's one of my goals one of my dreams one day but um and i hope you know knock on wood cross my fingers that i hope it happens one day um but i've had to climb the ladder you know, I was a G8 one time, yeah. and then I got to be around really good people at Broken Arrow, and, and, and I was a secondary coach. I mean, just coach secondary. Like, I wasn't a coordinator. I was coach secondary. Good people, good kids, good program, right? And and I was blessed that I was 26 years twenty six years old and got my first coordinator job. You talk about throwing darts at a dartboard now. <laughs> I thought I knew. You know, I thought I knew this. I thought I knew that. You don't really know until you're in it, right? It's kind of funny. It's like you go to college to be a teacher, get an education degree, and they don't tell you about the stuff that's going to happen on day one. No, they don't. Right? So, so anyway, to, to, to move on, I want to kind of talk about climbing the coaching ladder, okay, and what that, what that means, and what, at least to me, right? And so one of those things is coaching foundations, okay? And I think you've got to take ownership, you know, the whole man the mirror deal, right? Um, take ownership of your, of your position room. Take ownership of learning the scheme. Well, Coach, I only coach the corners. Well, learn what the D line's doing. Learn what the what uh, the linebackers are doing on, on this particular play. Well, I'm only, I'm only the old line coach. Well, learn what the quarterback progression is, and when you teach, you know, three man snap concept, right? Yeah. What's the mesh point when you're running inside versus outside zone with the running back quarterback, right? So if you got aspirations, take ownership of of your room, your position, right? Your guys. Okay, in ownership of your own growth. And and Coach Maxfield, Coach Scott Maxfield, head coach at here in state, another second dad to me, um, hired me pretty much sight unseen, bless his heart, a young, dumb twenty two <laughs> year old guy who just got done playing division two football, looking for my first job, and he hired me to be a GA at Henderson State. And I I can't say enough about him. Yeah. Love him to death. He is one he is one of the best men, best coaches that I've ever been around. It's near and dear to my heart. And he said something that he said, you know, don't run from the problem, chase the solution. Right? You know, we're sitting there after a ball game. We lose or draw. Why did he do this? Why did you call this? Why did you – whatever the situation was. And we all make mistakes. I mean, even the head coach, yeah. like he – and he was one of those. He'd come in and be like, shouldn't have, you know, shouldn't have punted right there. Whatever it was, right? So even he, he was taking ownership. The guy's been coaching forever. Don't run from the problem. Chase the solution. Yeah. Okay. And then be the example. You know, I'm in this business because, yes, I'm a coach kid. And I saw my dad. But it, it, I couldn't imagine being anything else. When I was about six years old, I was like, I want to coach. I don't know how to do anything different. It always provided for me. We yeah. were not rich by any means. But. It always provided for me. And when I was in small town America, small town Oklahoma, the school doors were open. I was there. Basketball, baseball, <laughs> track, right? FFA, like no joke, like show and stock show. I was there. Yeah. And education always provided for me. 
coaching always provided for me. We were not rich, but I always had food in my stomach and a shirt on my back. Always. And the, in, the, the influence that I had, not just from my dad, but from other coaches that I had growing up and teachers I had growing up, it, it led me even more into this profession, right? Um, you know, love challenges. Love challenges. You know, no one loves adversity, right? I know all <laughs> love adversity. And then I'm like, unfollow. Yeah. But, but it is true. You know, adversity gets the best of it. Hadn't hit yet, it's going to. Love challenges. Go be at those places that, uh, you know, I think as a coach, we're all like, well, I want to be here and I want to bring that logo and I want to win. And I've been there, guys. I've been at those places. It's great. But I'll tell you this. I'm a better coach. I'm a better coach at places that, that struggle, that that go 2-8 and eight versus 8-2. and two. Yeah. And that's a hard pill to swallow. <laughs> a hard pill to swallow. It's just like you're saying, you you, you have to find solutions. You you have to find solutions. I don't care if you're 10-0 or no 10, right? Yeah. And I've been at those places where you're 10-0 and you're wearing the logo. I've been at those places and they're great. But I found out I became a better coach as I move on and progress with the age. But also at those places that are 2-8, 3-7, 4-6. You know, I want somebody to come up with a 5-5 clinic. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? We've we've talked about that before. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, you know, I, and I call it ego, whatever. I feel like I can scheme up and talk ball with anybody. Don't get me wrong, but, yeah. um, you know, some of my best work I look at, I go, that was against a really good opponent. And, yeah, they beat us. I look at some of my best game plans. They were actually losses. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They were losses. But they were losses. I go, we took away that guy. Somebody else had to beat us. They had to find an answer, right? And honestly, it doesn't feel good on a Friday night. But I, but as I go back and about Saturday afternoon, I feel better. I'm like, we took away what they did. <clears throat> we made them do something yep. different. Okay. Coach, that's so important. I've I've been in so many clinics, and I'm not going to call out anyone in particular. I mean, I probably would, but not right now. Where I've listened to guys who have won the state championship, and I'm like, cool, this topic sounds good. And I go in there and listen to them, and I'm like, this is not what I wanted. I, I'm not getting anything out of this. It became like a bragging thing. And I'm with you. I'm like, I would rather listen to a guy who went five and five and gave me some really good technique or some really good pressure here. And so I talk about it all the time. I'm like, man, when I go to clinics, I, I just want good talks. I don't, I don't care who's giving it to me. I don't care what their record is. I don't care about the logo. Just give me something good. And, and I'm going to stay with me on that. Cause that's kind of, <laughs> I'm going to segue that, <laughs> um, you know, and, and honestly, be, be a teacher and student. Talk about study, learn, teach, and apply. You know, learn from influences, film, gather clinics, players. You know, it's recruiting season. When we're, when we're shooting this podcast right now, January, it's recruiting season. You know, those guys are they're recruiting our kids. They're there for our kids. Don't get me wrong. But I'm telling you, that guy's not getting going to get out our door without a five or seven minute. Tell me about how you're teaching your linebacker. Oh, yeah. Right. He's not getting out our door till I get a five minute drill, a five minute ball talk, five minute. Here's how we fit up counter, whatever it is. <laughs> talk to all our kids, take all the time you want. But when you're about to leave, here's a marker. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, I, I, Matt, how many? I mean, you've probably done it as much as I have, but I there very rarely did a college coach get out of the door if we didn't draw some up on the board. Um, I'm yeah, like, never. let's hold on, let's let's do it. So would not want to leave without it. My best time ever. I'm going to tell a quick story here, Matt, when you had to go to like, you had to go to like a career fair or something multiple days in a row at a veto. And I got to handle the college coaches. They kept pulling me out of class to handle the college coaches. And it was my favorite time because I was just like, yeah, we'll go get that kid. First, let's, let's talk on the board here real quick about what you're doing with this. <laughs> right. And I'm like, I promise he's calling now. We, we called the kid. He's coming down, but, but right. show me what you did here. <laughs> yeah. I had a great and, time doing that. And I always love it. There's occasionally where I'll pull up, you know, some film I've cut up or whatever. And somebody yeah. come in and I'm like, hey, what's this call? And they kind of look at me like, how do you get this? Yeah. Like, 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 you know, oh, yeah. This, but, um, uh, you know, to stay with, with coaching foundation, climb the ladder. You know, be comfortable in your skin, okay? And, th- and this is sometimes a hard lesson. You know, clinic season is coming, right? And you and, and down here in Texas, you're going to look at guys that what? The Allen logo, the South yep. Lake Care logo, the Austin Westlake logo, the Atascacita logo, the Soto logos. Yeah, right? yeah. You look at all those guys and going, they're really good. Yeah, they're really good. They have good players, and they've got good coaches. They, they've got a combination of both, right? But also, 
Also, be comfortable in your skin. Again, I talked about this. 0-10, 1-9, 2-8, 3-7. Okay? That doesn't make you a bad coach. And I know there are people out there who have gone nothing but 10-0s and, and, and have yeah. great seasons and great playoffs. There's a reason they're doing it. Yes, good coaches and good players, and they got to intertwine and mix. Absolutely. But, again, I talked about this. Some of the places I've been, a few places, I've actually become a better coach on and off the field at places that don't win as much. Yeah. Right? And so I'm going to be comfortable. I'm going to wake up. I'm going to go to work every day and give my, give my best self, whatever my best is for that day to our kids, our program, and our staff. Right? And, uh, you know, I think that's really, really important because sometimes that's where the best coaching happens. Right? Yes, we go see – the colleges and we go see the state champions and it's, it's important you go see those because they're doing something right obviously yeah but it's important that you see those guys and I, I don't want people to turn on the film of us and go they're coached well they're in the spots to make plays they're in spots to make tackles that's a good idea that's a good scheme to the back yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying that's a good scheme to take away my best receiver um and 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 you know this profession will humble you. It will. If yeah. you don't have humility, and I've learned this lesson the hard way, mm -hmm. dude. The hard way. One, my first call ever, ever as a DC, ever, was a 99-yard touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a DC, I'm a defense coordinator at Total Oklahoma. We're playing Blanchard. And Coach, coach Jeff Craig, the head coach of Blanchard, mm -hmm. just won a state championship this past year. Awesome job. Awesome coach. Great, you're a great guy. And – we, we took the ball, and we punted it, and we got it down to the one-yard line. So we're about to go on defense. First possession I've ever called, ever, 2014, 99 yards. And, of course, I got antsy, and I brought everybody. I mean, I, I think my wife blitzed on that play. <laughs> and 99 yards later, strike up the band. Wow. Do you remember the call, the exact call? Absolutely. It was Max. It was Max Black. Black yeah. is just what we call cover zero. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Matt, Max is our, is our cover zero, Matt, whatever the twit, whatever it is. Yeah. Max Black, boom, done. Okay, here we go. Send them. That's, seven. Seven. We That's seven. a great story. That's a great story, though. You coach. know, I'm thinking, all right, momentum. We just punted it. One yard line. We're going to do safety here. <laughs> no. Um. So, anyway, you know, be humble or it will humble you. Right? Yeah. And, and, and Guilty. You know, I've been able to speak at Glaciers all over the place. Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Dallas twice, Chicago, Reno, Charlotte. Uh, uh, I'm Well, again, as of right now, I'm 24. I'm going to San Francisco and Minneapolis to speak. Why? Because I've got good tape. I've got good kids showing good tape, right? Yeah. But I also know that um, I've been around people in places and places and, and lost, lost. And I've, I've been humbled, right? Um, you know, this, this coaching profession of – Sometimes you get canned. That's a story in itself. You get fired. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And, and so it, it, it will humble you. It, it, it will humble you. And, you know, never forget where you come from. I'm a coach kid from Conwell, Oklahoma. If you know where Conwell, Oklahoma is, probably don't. Look it up on a map. A town of about no 1,500 shot. people, maybe. And and I graduated from a small 4A high school in in, in, uh, in Oklahoma. A Ada, Oklahoma is where I graduated from high school. And, and I'm from southeastern Oklahoma. You know, it, but I also never forget where I come from. And I'm in, I'm in one of the biggest schools in the state of Texas, over 5,000 kids. <laughs> There's more kids in our hallways than are in my hometown. Like, that's not a joke. <laughs> and so um, it's important that I never forget where I come from. Ball's ball. 100%. Ball's ball. Run the ball, tackle the ball, block the ball. Yes, do some fancy stuff. Do some cute stuff that looks really cool. I get it. Be exotic. Study. Learn. Do some stuff that's cutting edge. But ball is ball at the Class A, 2A, 6A level. It is. It's just who's doing it, right? Yep. And it um, is everywhere around the country. You know, the, the simple things are the simple things, and we can complex, you know, make it as complex as we want and teach anything we want. But just like Belichick said a, a couple of times, we didn't block and we didn't tackle. That's why we lost the game. I don't care yep. about anything else. <laughs> and then I, I, I got – guys got about five more minutes, so I'm going to – I'm done. So I hope that's all yeah. right. So no, you're good. Yeah, you're yeah. good, coach. So talking talk about coaching, you know, the, the coaching ladder, network connect, guys. It's clinic season. Can you talk about bass? Shout out, shout out. You know, I I'm able to. I was able to get on uh, 
Coach He's Bass's podcast, Make Defense Great Again podcast. I've, I've got a, a three high podcast talked about, I don't know, a couple of years ago maybe that um, I, I hope was worth a darn for him. I've right? listened to it many times. Well, so. and, then, and then run the Power podcast. You know, Brady Walls and, and, and Rowdy Harper, they do a great job with the RTP podcast. Been on that yeah, one they too. Do. Great dudes, <laughs> Oklahoma dudes, by the way. So I'm kind of, you know, kind of partial, right? Um, but but network, connect, DM, right? How did we the how did we connect? We DM'd on Twitter. That's how this Absolutely. got started. This podcast, right? Yeah. Um, and, and so you know, go go to clinic, go job board, go visit. You know, literally get in the car and go visit somebody. You guys, recruiting season is coming up, or it is coming up, right? Of again, you're recruiting our kids, but before you leave, here's a pin. Yeah. Okay, um, you know, know your X's and O's, right? Well, coach, I'm only the old line coach. No, 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 no. You need to know what all of them are doing, right? Well, coach, I, I only coach the five techniques. No, 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 no. You want to be a coordinator? Yep. Well, you need to know what the corner, what the Learn safety, it. what the mic is doing on this play. You better know your X and O's because you're going to go to an interview and there's going to be some big time OC, big head coach that you've got a job for, an interview for, and – if you go in there and, and he says, hey, what's the safe doing this? And you go, I don't really know. I'm not sure. It's probably not yeah. good. Know your X's and O's, okay? You know, we talked about that. <clears throat> Apply for jobs. Go interview. Great way to connect. Guys, you, you may not get the job, but there's no failure. There's only feedback. Yeah. I've applied for jobs. One, haven't got a call back on some. <laughs> Two, interviewed, didn't get the job, Right. But each time there was feedback, yes. And there are times where I got the call, hey, you didn't get it. When it, it crushed me. It crushed me. Let's not get it twisted here. It was like, oh, happy day. I didn't get the job. It was, hey, man, give me some feedback. And then yep. I'll go cry later. I'll go I'll go to a dark room <laughs> and cry after we get off the phone, right? But but there was always feedback. Coach, how do I how do I make it better? What what did that guy do? The guy you hired, what what did he do that I didn't? Yeah. Right. And so so make sure when you go interview. Reach out for feedback, good or bad. And when you do, you get told no. Be ready to be told no. Guys, go apply for jobs, right? And I hope the guy you work for, coordinator, head coach, I hope he understands that you want to progress. You want to get better. You want to go to this program, that program. You want to go from being an assistant to coordinator, to coordinator, to head coach, right? And there yeah. are some guys There are some guys who are completely fine with being an assistant. There's nothing wrong with that. You need those people. You need those people. But I hope there's a whole bunch of guys who also – I'm young. I'm 25, 26. I'm an assistant coach right now. But by the time I'm 30, I want to be a coordinator. By the time I'm 38, 40. And, you know, here's what else. Don't put a timetable on your career. I'm speaking. Guys, I'm preaching to my own self. Don't put a timetable because I did. I've done it. Man, 35, I want to be here. Yeah. I wish I was here at 32. I need to be here. At, again, I'm doing it, right? I do Because, you know, somebody would come by, somebody would come by recruiting while I was like, oh, I wish I was there. I should be here. Yeah. And I'm guilty. I'm guilty, guys. But but don't put a timetable on your career and your path and your tree. Right? And when you do get told no for that job, you went and interview and somebody says, hey, you didn't get it. Remember, get feedback. Okay? But sometimes that no is a blessing in disguise. Yeah. Okay. I, interviewed, I, I interviewed for a job. I'm not going to tell you where, but I interviewed for a job. For a job, didn't get it. Didn't get it. Nah, it was hurt. It hurt me. The guy was out two years later. Yeah. And coach, I think you wrote it on our notes for this, but right, comparison is the thief of joy, and that's such a good quote. And I use it a bunch. I used a bunch of my daughter because you know you see other kids and you always try to compare your kid's development with other kids, but it's the same thing as coaches. We look around and we see these young guys, you know, when Sean McVay got the job with the Rams, I, you know, at the time you're like, he's only a couple of years older than me. Like, what am I doing? My, this guy's the head coach of the LA Rams wow. and I'm the coordinator at, you know, X high school. Like what, what did I do wrong? And the answer is cool. nothing, right? People have different connections they are different points. And I always look through that and kind of the celebrity story I always go back to is the, the Morgan Freeman thing, right? Like he never got a big movie till he was like almost 60. And so it's like, just, just keep your path and keep working it. At some point it's going to pay off and be rewarding. It, it, at some point it will, it does, you know, and, and that's, again, don't rush. What is it meant to be? And I, I look Correct. myself in the mirror a, a lot. And, I've and, done it multiple and, times. <laughs> and it's hard guys. It's hard, you know? And, um, and I talk about being comfortable in your own skin, 
right? You know, sometimes I look back, and I'll be honest, guys, I'm in a place this past year, we went one and nine. I know, and some of you guys are like, why would I want to listen to this guy? He went, <laughs> I get it. I get it. What does this guy have to offer that he won one game last year? Right? But I hope I have something to offer you that I've known previously or I'm working towards or that I've had to be humbled, right? Or somebody taught me something that hopefully I'm teaching you while you're driving in the truck listening to this after an hour and 40 minutes. <laughs> and so it leads to the comparison is the thief of joy, right? Yeah. Again, I'm guilty. Well, I think we're all guilty as men, as coaches. Oh, yeah. And we look at those logos. You go to clinic and you look at that logo and go, God, they're really good. And he's got the state championship ring that's, you know – the size was hand. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'm guilty. I have been guilty. But then I look at, you know what? I remember praying and I remember dreaming to be a 6A coordinator in DFW. Yeah. Well, it's hard. It's hard. It's lots of work. And we play really good people. Really good people. But I remember, I remember dreaming five, seven, eight, ten years ago. Tell my wife, hey, Hey, babe, when, when the time comes and if I ever get a shot to go be a coordinator at 6 a DFW, we're gone. Yeah. I got my shot. I got my shot. And yeah, I, and I think it, a, a, yeah, a lot of guys, they don't, you know, they, they get that and then they're, right, they get to where they want to be and then they're just worried about the next thing and the next thing. And we've all done it. I've done it too. Um, you know, so it's it's such a hard thing. And, uh, but, you know, just like coach says, like, you know, be happy where you're at and, and let that growth come naturally and do all these things that coach was talking about. So we're going to go ahead and, and wrap it up for tonight. Coach, get, we, we got to get you back on clearly. Cause there's some things we didn't touch on that we definitely want to talk on. So I'll get with you at some point. We'll schedule you to come back on, uh, as long as you want to. Um, but if you want to, uh, reach out or follow coach, he's at coach Gower on Twitter. Like he said, he only has a Twitter. So uh, go follow him on Twitter. Reach out. I believe you have a Coach Tube as well, correct, Coach? So I've got two videos on on Coach Tube. There's a there'll be a few more that are processing. Um, hopefully, have them up in the next two months. Maybe that's a big stretch on the maybe part. But yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. So he's got a Coach Tube. If you're interested in some of his bundles, where he talks about all of his defensive stuff. He's been on plenty of other podcasts, so go check those out. You know, one he mentioned was Make Defense Great Again. I'm a big fan of Vass, so always got to give a shout out to him. Um, and if you're interested, if, you, if you're if you scared or not scared, if, if you don't really want to reach out to him, but you want to send us the questions, you can just send it to us at Podcast at gmail.com. I'll get it over to Coach and get you an answer. Again, follow us on Twitter at Board Drill Pod. Uh, this will go live. It's on YouTube. It's on Apple. It's on Spotify. So three different ways to listen. And also, like we told Coach Gower earlier, is we're, we're on TikTok. So if you're a, a younger coach and you're a TikTok guy, we're trying to provide content on that as well. Uh, Matt, any closing words for the night? Hey, ball is ball, you know? Ball is ball. Uh, and I like it. I love to keep it likable and learnable. Awesome stuff. I'm definitely keeping that one. I'm going to steal that from you, Coach. And uh, uh, some good stuff. I'd love to get back with you at some point and talk about 11 and 12 personnel specifically against the yep. tight front. Or sure. meant as you call it. Um, I, I think we could we could get together and uh, put together a pretty good episode just talking back and forth about run scheme versus you know eleven twelve personnel versus that front. So I think sure. I think we can we can get something together for something good. And we'll guys, get together uh, after he gets through his clinic rounds. <laughs> yeah. Guys, if you you know if we're running on two hours now, I could do this all day. Um, <laughs> Thank goodness I had an understanding wife, bless her heart. Um, but hopefully you're on a long road trip or whatever, and so I hope you got something out of this. <laughs> guys, Coach Bradburn, Coach, Coach Dixon, I can't thank you guys enough. You guys are all-stars, changing the game, man, doing something for coaches. Um, man, get at them. You only gave me a shout-out. Shout-out to them. Those dudes. <laughs> We're just the slappies, yeah. right? We bring great coaches on for them to listen to. We're just two ex coaches that just want to talk ball still. So, uh, for me and Matt, for Coach Gower, everyone have a great night, and we will be back on soon. Thank you. Guys.